What's up guys, Grizz finally back here with you today to give you my most recent Ultimaker Kira settings. It's been a few months, but I'm finally getting around to sitting here in the studio and recording, and I'd like to go over with you quickly some of the things that I've changed since my last video. With these settings, you should still be able to provide high quality prints, but much faster than the last settings. And I've also tweaked my raft settings a bit as well, but they should still come off just like that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into this. I don't like to waste time. Let's see here. <clears throat> I've got Ultimaker Cure pulled up. I don't know if I've already mentioned it. I am still using version 4.11. These sh settings should still be just fine for 4.12. If I was running 4.12, I would still be using these settings. So where we're at now, uh, my profile has a layer height of 0.16. Uh, initial layer height is now 0.2. My line widths are all pretty basic at 0.4, support line widths 0.4, layer line width initial 100%. My walls haven't changed. Um, 1.2, three walls, outer wall wipe distance 0.2. I compensate for overlaps. All three of these are checked. Now these are expert settings. If you don't have these um, <laughs> selected, sorry, you have to go down here to the little hamburger as they call it and hit expert to get all of the settings oh sorry i'm tired <clears throat> i fill gaps between walls everywhere and i filter out tiny gaps uh, all of these are pretty basic i go my z seam alignment at sharpest corner and i hide it so that on your prints uh, it's going to be kind of hard to see but you're not going to see that seam as much it's going to try to find a place to hide it to where you're not going to see the starting and stop point of your print head as for top and bottom layers, I'm still running uh, top and bottom thickness of 0.6 for top, for bottom layers. Lines and lines, I found this a little easier to get the rafts off if they're all just lines. So I did change that. Let's see, skin overlap is 5% still. All of these are still pretty basic and the same. Uh, my infill, most of the time on my larger prints like this Pikachu here, I'm running 5%. For anything kind of smaller, such as a print like this, a nice handheld print, I do run 10% just to make it a little more sturdy. Uh, I've changed my infill pattern to grid to save on material. Grid actually seems to consume the less materi least material other than the new uh, lightning infill with 4.12. So if you're already on 4.12, I would probably go ahead and use that because it seems to save a lot of filament from what I've heard. <clears throat> As far as the rest of these settings, they're all pretty basic. Infill overlap is 10%. Infill wipe distance 0.1 and infill layer thickness 0.16. Uh, your material settings, as always, are going to change based on what type of material you're using. For my basic PLA, I tend to run 205 degrees. For my silk PLA, I tend to run 210. Um, for these settings, I was running the magic PLA, which likes to run at 225. That's going to change based on your material. Um, <clears throat> I've lowered my build plate down to 50 degrees, mainly because my print room is getting too hot for live videos. It seems like the printers do just fine on 50 degrees. They require less preheat time than 60. That's just what I've been running lately. My flows are all 100% except for outer wall flow and initial layer flow. My speeds. This is where I've changed a lot of things. Uh, I basically kept it all basic and didn't change anything. Um, so my, my print speeds, that was kind of confusing. Just, just follow along. Okay. My print speed is 50. My infill spe speed is 50. My wall speeds are all, these next four are all scaled down to 25. Well, the next eight, pretty much the rest of these are 25, which is where Cura should put them. My travel speed is 140 millimeters per second squared. Uh, initial layer print speed is 20. And my travel speed for the initial layer is 150. <clears throat> Two slower layers. I enable acceleration control and everything is the same except for travel acceleration and initial layer travel acceleration are 5,000 millimeters per second squared. I have jerk control on. This is all pretty much what it starts you at, I think. If not, I run all 20s except for on travel jerk is 30 and initial layer travel jerk is 30 as well. For my retraction, now this is for my Bowden setup. So if you're running a direct drive setup, it's going to be a little bit different. Um, for my Bowden, I run 7 millimeters at 45 millimeters per second. For my direct drives, I run about 2 millimeters. 
<clears throat> at about the same speed. But let's see. Retraction minimum travel is 0.8. Retraction maximum count is 10. Uh, extrusion distance window is six. Combing mode is not in skin. What this does is on the actual skin parts of the print, um, it will, I don't know how to explain it. So it keeps it when already, okay, it says it keeps the nozzle within already printed areas when traveling. What this does is you might get some more stringing in between the supports, but on the skin, it's going to try to avoid that as much as possible. So you're not stringing from your print. I have seen amazing increase in quality where stringing is reg regarded uh, because of that setting alone. <clears throat> and then I always have it avoid printed parts when traveling so that your print head doesn't go knocking stuff over, breaking parts off. This setting has to be turned on or you're going to have a lot of trouble. Cooling. This is all basic. Nothing's changed here. My support settings should be pretty much the same, but I'm going to go over these one more time as well. I use normal most of the time. I don't like tree. I don't have good settings for tree. If you know good settings for trees, support, share them in the description below. I run normal supports 99% of the time and I run them everywhere and at a 49 degree angle using zigzag pattern, one wall line count, 5% distancy, er, density, support line distance eight, uh, support Z distance 0.2. These three are 0.2, XY distance 0.8, XY override Z. All of these are going to pretty much, this little link, they're all linked to something. They're going to stay pretty much the same. Feel free to copy those. Pause the video, take from those settings what you need. I'm going to kind of skip down to my raft settings real quick so we can end the video. I use a raft for everything. I like it. Some people don't. I like it. Um, my raft settings are 5 for the extra margin, 5 for the smoothing, 0.2 for the air gap, uh, 2 top layers. 0.16 top layer thickness, top line width and spacing are 0.4, middle thickness is 0.2, middle line width is 0.8, raft mill spacing is 1, raft base thickness is 0.24, and then the rest of these settings you can copy as well. The real most important one that you need to have is your uh, air gap at 0.2, and then kind of the spacing and widths that are going to align with these settings. Um, <clears throat> that's pretty much it. I don't use any of the experimental stuff. I will sometimes turn on conical supports if I'm printing something like a Pokeball where the top cones up and I want to have it kind of give me some room to get in there and take the support out. But that's, that's a situational setting. With these settings, this is a, uh, I think it's a 245 millimeter Pikachu sliced with these settings that we just set up. We'll give it a second here. It, my these are way faster than my previous settings so if you're using the previous settings the quality should have been fine but the speed was kind of sucky this is the this print is a maxed out print for the most part on an ender 3 v2 and with these settings once it finishes slicing it's decided to take its time it will print in one day 16 hours and 42 minutes so that's really really good considering if you do something around this size at about 120 millimeters uh, I would say between seven and eight hours, probably less. I'm going to go ahead and slice it anyways, just to kind of give you an idea. But let's see here. Yeah, eight hours and 43 minutes for something around this size. The support should come right off depending on your filament. The raft should come right off. The quality should be good. These settings are a lot better than my last ones, and I hope they help. Guys, if you have anything else you'd like to try to learn, something that I do that you'd like to make, maybe a tutorial from feel free to leave it in the comments if these settings work for you let me know in the comments as well thank you guys for watching make sure to subscribe and i'll see you in the next one